Okay, in this video, we'll be going through an intro to Google Display Ads, uh, also known as Banner Ads. So first, we'll do a quick intro to uh, display campaigns and then go into setting up Google Display Campaigns. That way, you know more about how these type of ad formats work and how they're set up and different targeting options that can benefit your advertising campaign for a better ROI, better branding, uh, remarketing, and things like that. So first off, let's do a quick intro to display campaigns, uh, also known as banner ads, a lot of people call them. So first off, uh, display campaigns appear on other websites, not google.com uh, search ads. Display ads, also known as, as banner ads, people call them that, it's, it's the same thing, it's on Google's display network. The type of ad is a, a banner ad, is what it's, the format's technically called. So you've probably seen these if you're on you know, weather.com or a news website or things like that. You'll have a banner ad at the top, they're at the right, there are little boxes on the right side, usually on the bottom of the site. T typically the very top and the right side is where you'll see banner ads. So this training video is actually going to be a sample from our actual training program so you can get a better idea of what's in here, uh, what we offer. Some of these are more uh, beginner lessons and they'll go into more advanced. So if you need more advanced training, uh, we do have a link below in the description that will give you access to uh, discounts and different things like that from our advanced training and all of our different programs. That's going to be a link down in the description below. So campaigns in Google Ads, uh, at the campaign level, this is the highest level settings you're going to set up for man managing your advertising campaigns, uh, all the different settings on there. Campaigns are the starting point of the hierarchy where you configure everything. Uh, in this case, you know where you want your, at what websites you want your uh, ads to show on. So it's the same thing for display campaigns. All your controls are at the campaign setting and you'll select display campaign or search campaign or, or things like that. And then you have your different ad groups. And this is where the targeting is set up and where your ads are contain contained. A little bit different than search campaigns, where your ad groups have the keywords in them. Uh, in display campaigns, your ad groups have the targeting. So that's whether it's a remarketing audience, whether it's hand-picked placements or website topics, things like that. Uh, ad groups have the targeting, not the, the campaign settings. So let's go into setting up Google Display Ads. Um, so it, it's similar to search ads. The campaign level is where you select what type of campaign it's going to be. Is it showing on the search network, like google.com? Is it on the display network, YouTube, uh, Gmail, video ads, things like that? So in this case, you would select display network at the campaign level. Uh, and the major settings are still the same at the campaign level. Uh, you do the budget, the schedule, and the devices you want to show on uh, at that level. Except display campaigns, again, want to emphasize they have their targeting options controlled at the ad group level, and they're best separated actually into different campaigns for different targeting. So for example, a remarketing campaign, you'd want that ad group uh, or ad groups to only have remarketing. You wouldn't want a campaign that's targeting remarketing and placements and all these other things uh, it's a little different with display campaigns. One display campaign will usually have one, maybe two ad groups. Whereas a search campaign, you'll have a lot of different ad groups to sort your, uh, your keywords. So it's a similar process for setting it up. It, it, when you very first create the campaign, it asks what type of campaign it is, where do you want your ads to show. Uh, instead of search, you'll just select display. It has all the other options here, shopping, video, uh, express, discovery, and sometimes you'll see other boxes pop up. Uh, Google has different programs that they're testing, but the main ones are usually at the top. So instead of search, you'll just select display. And then uh, all these other settings are still here. You select where you want it to show, language, uh, different audiences, if that's relevant, the daily budget, what type of bidding you want to do, automated bidding, standard, or uh, uh, manual bidding, things like that. All, all those are still at the campaign level. Also, the targeting options for display campaigns, uh, there's a lot more than most people realize. There's 
most common one, uh, remarketing or retargeting as it's often called. These are the banner ads that follow the user uh, to other websites after they've been to your website. So you've probably seen these uh, after you go to Amazon uh, or something like that. You'll see the same products you viewed or different website you were recently on. It, the banner ads keep following you as you're on different websites that contain ads. So the next one is actually getting updated uh, in 2023. This is going to change similar audiences. They will run for a little bit longer. Uh, you can't create them after May of 2023, and they won't run at all after August 1st, 2023. So you can still use the similar audiences. Uh, what this does, it just mirrors an audience. Like if you have a remarketing list or you upload a customer list, or something like that, it's going to find more people that are similar to that audience or lookalikes if you've done Facebook ads. It just tries to find more people that are like the same audience. But again, uh, this one's, I mean, you can still use it until May and or create them until May and then after August, you're not gonna be able to use them at all. So what it's switching to is the checkbox we actually tell you to avoid, but um, this would be if you wanted to expand the audience beyond your targeting. Maybe you have a remarketing audience and you can check a box to expand it beyond that one and find the remarketing list and people that are similar to people that have been to your website, for example. Uh, that's a little risky. I mean, it's kind of a test one because you're, you're going with such a broad audience. It could work, but it's not quite the same as the original similar audiences uh, were where you could just target the similar audience. Now you're going to have to target one audience and then expand it. So inside the Google Ads account, it's just a setting. There's used advanced uh, targeting. This expands it beyond whatever you, you actually targeted, which usually you don't want to do that. If it's a remarketing, you just want to focus on remarketing. Also, you can target based on the keywords that are on a website. So you select the keywords that are on the website you want your ads to show on. So if there's a particular product or service or um, something that somebody's researching, if, if they're on a blog, or a news website or a forum that's discussing whatever that keyword is, your banner ad will pop up right next to it. So it's a good time when people are researching outside of search engine because people often uh, look for reviews and different testimonials and they'll read up on a particular product or service or especially a big purchase like a car or a house, something like that. And you're, as long as it's a website that allows ads, if the keywords are on that page, your banner ad could be right there to the right or above or below an article that uh, a relevant article that they're reading. Uh, also, placements is another option. That's just you select specific websites you want your website to show on. So you just handpick. Uh, if you want to be on a major news website, you just click on it. Uh, add it in the settings if you want to be on a local news website for a local brand or a restaurant or home services, something like that. As long as it's in Google's display network, which it'll tell you if it is, you can just manually type in websites you want your ad to show on. Uh, it's that easy. Uh, many years ago, you used to have to contact that website owner directly and purchase banner ads from them. Uh, now Google display network covers most of the internet, really, it's it's a very large display network, so they have most placements that have ads on them. Uh, also, somewhat similar to keywords, you can select by topics. This, you just select websites that fit a specific topic you want your ads to show on. So if a website is categorized as a particular topic, uh, maybe it's news, maybe it's real estate, maybe it's cars, maybe it's business, software, uh, whatever topic, that that website is categorized as you you can select particular topics. So if somebody's you know researching accounting software, you can you just pick something similar to that as a topic. So if, if you're not quite sure which keywords to target or you don't know which placements, because there's so many small blogs and forums and things like that, you can just do based on topics to do a really wide range and then you know find other websites you weren't aware of that fit the the t a relevant topic. Uh, for your product or service. Also, demographics. Uh, some of these are restricted depending on the industry. So uh, some of the ones that that uh, got restricted with that, they're uh, housing related or credit or employment. 
Uh, Google's policies outline all of that. Some of that you, you cannot target by demographic, but a lot of them still allow you to. You just target users based on the demographic info uh, that, that they've shared uh, or that they have on their account or something like that. It, it's not 100% clear how Google has all the data on their display network, but uh, they let you filter by gender, age, parental status, household income, marital status, educational level, and home ownership status. Uh, just something to keep in mind with this, it's not 100% accurate. They, they don't borrow census data or something like this. It, it's Google taking its best guess based on the data it has from uh, Google users and G people that are currently logged into their Google account or have a Gmail account, what they've shared, what info they're able to put together. So it, it is by no means 100% accurate. So keep that in mind. If you filter a particular age or house come, household income, you'll definitely get people outside of that target. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's, it's an okay placement, but Google is guessing at a lot of this. It doesn't have their exact, uh, you know, census data or something like that. Uh, also, there is an option called in market or life events. This is an option to target users based on uh, what they're actively researching or major life events. So if they're in the market to uh, buy a new house or a new car or something like that, or they had a major life event such as uh, recently married or something like that. Uh, again, Google's kind of guessing based on their browsing history and different activities is in their uh, in markets fairly accurate life events. Uh, Google's doing its best to guess that. So these, these aren't perfect. Usually in markets, pretty good option. Affinity audiences, uh, that's a similar targeting option. It's just based on their interests. So um, it has things like avid investors or, or people that read the news regularly or things like that. It, they're really broad interest. Uh, they're, they're not going to be very, very specific. You, you'd want to use something more like keywords or placements. But if you're doing a broad one like avid investors and you have some type of investing software, investing news, or something like that, financial services, that would be relevant. Know that these people are uh, interested in investing. So the, the interests are fairly broad, but there are a lot of industries and products and services where that would be uh, a good broader audience to, to reach. There's also custom audiences. There's a couple of different ways to set up these audiences inside of your account. So you target users based on recent keywords they searched. Uh, it, it doesn't do the exact keyword. Like if they searched a keyword yesterday, uh, you're targeting them. That's not really how it works. It's related to those keywords. So it's almost like broad match. Uh, it's it's going to find themes and keywords relevant to those keywords. So just remember, it's not the exact keywords they search. It's more of a theme. Same thing with websites they recently browsed. Uh, I mean, Google's help article even says it's related to websites that you put in there. So if you put in competitors, websites, um, it's not necessarily going to target someone that was just on your competitors' websites. It's more so uh, that, that that's the theme or the type of website they're browsing, which could still be relevant if, if you're uh, car dealership and you put in a lot of other car dealerships, it's, it's likely someone has been to a car dealership website recently. So that can still be relevant. You can also target by types of apps they use uh, and a little bit of interest or purchase intentions. So these are a little bit broader audiences. It's kind of going on a theme, not the exact websites they went to or the exact keywords they search, but it does narrow it down a little bit more to have interest and behavior uh, narrowed down as an audience. So these are the main categories that you would be using for uh, display banner ads. So you can see there's quite a few different options that could narrow it down and really put your banner ads in front of relevant audiences and, and not just burn through all of your budget with a lot of irrelevant clicks. A lot of people don't know about all these very advanced targeting options. Uh, so you can get to people outside of search engines as a first, first touch point or remarketing or getting in front of the right audience uh, while before they're on search engines or even after they're on search engines for 
uh, industries that, that take a lot more research. You want to stay in front of them, not just remarketing ads, but uh, banner ads on relevant websites of your audience. So that covers everything for this training. Great work, and let's jump on to the next training session. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching our PPC ads training video. Uh, if you want more videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, like this video if you found it useful. And any questions, post them in the comments down below. Uh, we also have additional training in the description. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.